Tim played himself all of it. <laughs> all right, back to last night's game. Von Miller promised a good one, good old fashioned. I'm out here just trying to serve. You with the wrong guy. <laughs> he promised a good old fashioned butt whooping canty, and then he went out and delivered a good old fashioned butt whooping canty. The Denver defense picking off Josh Rosen three times, bringing two of those back for points in the first quarter. Also had six sacks, recovered two fumbles. Maybe Von Miller can predict the future. <laughs> Josh Rosen left in the fourth with a toe injury. He'll be evaluated. Broncos win big 45 to 10. Here is the fortune teller himself, Von Miller. Ain't no backing down now. And I think, uh, you know, we have a great football team. We got great leadership. We got a great GM, great owner, great coaches. And uh, we got great players. And I just thought what we was missing is just the, the confidence part of it. It's a team game, and I know my brothers have had my back. Uh, I obviously didn't play. Um, up to my standard or even close to it. But, uh, I mean, that's why um, you play another one next week. Katie, this was one of those games where Von Miller had enough, where he's like, I don't, take all your previews, throw them, away. I'm getting out there, I will win this game. It is going to be an all -out. You ever put yourself in a position like that? You ever have an opponent where just cast all the numbers and stats aside, it was just going to be you were going to go out there and grind it out and win it? No, I did that one time, and I... <laughs> Even though it worked out for us, I kind of regret doing it. So I called my shot in the Super Bowl. I said, everybody in New York, get ready for a really good game against the Patriots in Super Bowl 46 yep. and get ready for the parade on Tuesday. Now, it just so happened that it worked out, right, yeah. but I wouldn't do it again. But right. all I was saying, you get one shot. But when you listen to what Von Miller said about that, after having those four losses, he was talking about trying to instill a level of confidence in his teammates, and he put it on him. And that's the right place for it to be because all the pressure for this Denver Broncos team in order to try to get a win has to fall on this defense. That's clearly the most talented aspect and of their team. And you saw it And you saw night. it on display last night. And so that defense got things off to a fast start. The deflection by Derek Wolf at the line of scrimmage on the second second play led to the Todd Davis pick six. They had another pick six with Chris Harris in that first quarter. So, I mean, when you have two touchdowns by your defense in the first quarter of play, that's how you change the complexion of the game, and that was the difference. If you look at those four losses, not a whole lot of offensive touchdowns in the first half of those four losses. So, if somebody was going to get the party started for the Broncos, it had to be the defense, and of course, Von Miller, he was up for the challenge. Sure. Uh, Nick, there, there are a couple benefits. I know you don't think there's a whole bunch. Jenna thinks there's a lot more it benefits of working with me. One of the benefits <laughs> is guy says something like that. I, I, I happen to be covering this league long enough that I was one of the people to interview Chris Canty. Now it was after he had already made that prediction. So Canty not necessarily telling us the whole truth because even <laughs> after he made that prediction about the parade, you know, I asked him, you know, man, what's the story behind the story? Did you look at the film? Feel, feel as if you guys have great matchups in this game. He said, yeah, we feel like we have good matchups. We know the only way you can beat, beat Tom Brady is by going through the center in the guard of the New England Patriots. I said, yeah, but is there anything else? He said, yeah, there's a little something else, Chris. I was like, what is it? He said, man, we played them that last game of the regular season. Man, they disrespected me. And I said, what? He was like, yeah, this is about respect. I'm going to go out there and create some respect. So Von Miller... Man, a lot of times, this is about respect. Mm -hmm. That defense, as well as they've played, led them to two Super Bowl appearances, led them to Peyton Manning getting his second Super Bowl. Man, they've been disrespected, and he was going out there to be able to earn some of that respect back. And sometimes it's not about scheme. It's about I'm getting ready to force my will, and that's what we see sometime in this league with great players. I thought it was great leadership by Vaughn because it's hard not to follow his lead. And you could see instantly, I'm playing left in, I'm playing right in, they're double teaming me, I don't care. I'm not gonna make excuses. And that's what great players do, that's what great leaders do. They don't sit around and point at everyone else. Oh, it's that guy's fault, it's that guy's fault. Yeah, it's a team game, but it starts with a lot of great individual efforts. And that's what I, I saw last night from Von Miller. On the other side, you gotta look at, at rookie quarterback Josh Rosen. His team just did, his offense didn't help him out at all. Well, nice. this, listen, I, I was very high on Josh Rosen going into the draft. After the draft, I said, I think multiple times that I think he's going to have the best career of any of these guys. Now, Baker has, I think, taken the lead in that regard, but I'm still high on Josh Rosen. But last night on my radio show, I talked to a guy named Greg McElroy, who was an excellent college football player, won a couple championships. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the game he played which I believe was the last or the second to last NFL game he ever played for the New York Jets 
against the San Diego Chargers, that's who they were at the time, when he not only was sacked 11 times, but mm -hmm. he was hit or knocked to the ground 34 times. And he, he said to me last night on the show, man, during that game, I, I questioned if I was good at football anymore, if I liked football anymore. He said, I'd done this my whole life, and it immediately made me think of you. Because you said one of these young quarterbacks might get the football knocked out of him. Mm. And that was, he was verbalizing, that's what happened to him. Like, and now, I mean, all credit to him, he's gone on a very successful broadcasting career. But that day, the football got knocked out of him. That didn't happen to Rosen last night. But it's on the board, it could. If they don't make some significant either schematic changes, mm -hmm. personnel changes at the Protection offensive line, changes. find a way to use David Johnson as the weapon that he is, this isn't the biggest guy. And even in today's NFL, you can still get the football knocked out of you. And I was thinking of you when I was watching the game and when I was thinking about Greg McElroy's comments. Yeah, here's the thing. When you're dealing with a young quarterback, you got to make sure that you protect him so he can develop well. Now, you thought that that's what the Cardinals would do when they signed David mm -hmm. Johnson to that contract extension before the season started. We thought, okay, at some point, we'll see Josh Rosen, but it'll be a heavy dose of David Johnson and put him in situations where he wouldn't be asked to do too much. But last night, because they got down in a hurry, they were forced to throw the ball. And when you are one-dimensional offense going up against that kind of pass rush with, with Shaq Barrett and Von Miller mm -hmm. and Brad Chubb, like, you're going to be in a tough spot. And that's exactly where Rosen found himself. And the fact that Andre Smith and DJ Humphreys couldn't lay a hand on those edge guys, that didn't help the matter. And so I think that is what dictated the complexion of last night's game. And Steve Wilkes and, and Mike McCoy, they didn't have any answers for it. Yeah, Mike McCoy is definitely put in question here. Nick has talked about him, the lack of creativity. This is the thing that pressure does the young quarterbacks. It makes them speed up the play clock in their head. Now, they don't know what pro football is about, so it's already faster than anything they've ever played. Now, the rush makes their brain move faster. So also, it makes them speed up the anticipation. So you can't anticipate a wide receiver because the wide receiver is not moving at the same clock you are. The last thing it makes them do, too, is it makes them speed up their drops. So the drops with the wide receiver's routes are timed up. So a three-step um, drop is timed up with the route outside. A five-step is dropped. Now, if I speed up his drop, the the wide receiver's not Everything's speeding all up. Everything's the same. Everything's it, is, yeah. it is it is like hard dancing to, with Jenna. It is hard to wow. impossible. <laughs> but this is the thing, though. At Great least you start answer. with good looking. So at least you got a chance. Okay. Just allow me to be the lead. Okay, <laughs> that's the way you have to be able to do that. So yeah. it's hard on younger quarterbacks, and then they start to make up their mind. Is this? business cut out for me and that's a real question that young quarterback Marcus Mariota the reason why Greg McElroy is coming up was because he got sacked 11 times yep. mm -hmm. and Greg McElroy is the answer to that trivia question it was the last, <laughs> last time? time someone got sacked yeah. 11 times right so Arizona man do something for your quarterback support your quarterback and if you have to let go of one of them coaches to uh, in the meantime yeah. then it's in the best interest of the organization Chris Kenny thank you so much All right, thank you. really appreciate it coming up 27 dance moves you haven't seen by me that's next on first things <laughs> no. Oh, it's not. Um, America. What? That's our nine.